everyone, welcome to guided journaling number 18. This uh, video was inspired by a customer request. And this is really a hybrid tracking journaling type of exercise. Now, this person is recovering from neck surgery and so they've got a lot of physical therapy exercises things like that they need to keep track of and you know the pros and cons of those things they're doing and i found this question very interesting because i can actually relate to this since i have also had neck surgery i had neck surgery three years ago it's quite the ordeal to recover from and still to this day I have a lot of neck related appointments every week and neck related exercises that I do so I could totally kind of use my own experience to imagine the kinds of things that um, they need to keep track of here so hopefully this will help some other people and you could also do this as um, you know some other kind of exercise or health tracking. It wouldn't have to be like recovering from a neck surgery, of course. So um, she said that she likes to use the A5 Kokio Biz, I believe. Um, I'm gonna use a very similar notebook. I'm gonna use the Kokuyo Sufa soft ring in A5. Now, um, they're practically the same notebook one of the differences is in the grid size. So the grid size of the soft ring biz is five millimeters and then the Kokio Sufa is three or four millimeters. I'll look it up and put it here so that you know. But um, since I'm a tiny writer, I like that smaller grid size. So um, this is an interesting, it's almost like a hybrid bullet journal journal calendar kind of thing that I tend to do for my um, physical therapy type of stuff so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how exactly how I would create my June pages so that you can get an idea here um, so there's two sections that are like essential and there's one that would be optional for you. But for me, I feel like it's really necessary. And so I'm gonna actually start with that one. So I love the month um, Midori paintable stamp. I use it all the time. So I'm gonna use it for my June pages. Um, and what I'm gonna do on this first page is I'm actually going to create, let me see if I have it kind of show you. I'm going to create a page like this where I have my vertically I have my days of the month and my dates of the month. So let me just do that for you and there's always enough room for me if I have more than one appointment on a single day so it works out really well. Um, and also, she said she does like a more colorful approach. So I am going to use a Meister Unistyle Fit. I have 0.38 blue, black, pink, and violet in this pen. It's really nice because in a really compact single pen, you can fit three different colors, which is great for this type of tracking. So I'm going to start with my dates. And I always start out my month by putting everything in there that I already have scheduled. So I'm gonna actually do that for June here for you. That way, as you, um, you know, say your personal trainer calls and is trying to schedule an appointment, it's like you have at this glance um, kind of what is going on with all of your 
physical therapy or neck related stuff that month. Um, some things you want to have on the same day, some things you don't, some things you really want to spread out. And so this just really helps you at a glance. Okay, so once you've got all of your pre-scheduled stuff in there for your month, you can feel like it is ready as things, as you're trying to fit in, you know, other massage therapy appointments or physical therapy or what have you for your issue. You have this really handy at a glance organization. So this is going to help keep you organized. So even though I consider this an optional page, I find it so important personally. So now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get into the actual exercise logging slash journaling pages. Now, depending on how many notes you like to write for these, you can basically have a page per week. You could, if you didn't have many notes, manage to fit the entire month or multiple weeks on one page. Let's say you have a lot of notes to write and you so you want to give yourself plenty of space. So I'm going to do one page per week for this next part. I'm going to set up my first uh, week for the month. And um, a really essential part of this is gonna be an exercise tracker. So let me just start setting that up and then I'll kind of explain it. So I'm going to have my first week and the dates along the top here. And then I am going to write my exercises over here on the left hand side. And uh, you know, depending on how many you're having to keep track of, this could be, you know, of varying lengths. So I'm just gonna do my real ones I'm trying to keep track of right now. Okay, so after you've written your list of exercises, we are going to use a highlighter to kind of schedule in how frequently you're supposed to do those exercises. So some of them are going to be every day, some of them are going to be maybe a couple times a week, and so you really sit there and you think about, okay, here's this one my chiropractor gave me, she told me to do it every day, and so on. Just because I know someone will ask. I am using my favorite of the new mild liners for this, and this is the mild baby pink, and I think it is really pretty, and it's really nice with blue black. So I'm going to use this here, and let me just log when I'm supposed to do these here. I always leave myself a little bit of space in case I'm going to be adding on some exercises that week. And then down toward the bottom, I keep track of a couple other things. And right now I do AM pain and PM pain. And I'll show you in a moment how I do that. So I set up a section over here 
for my journaling notes that become necessary as I'm logging my exercise. So, let me get my blue black going here. All right, so what it's gonna look like is, let me zoom in a little bit for you. Here we go. So on Monday, I'm gonna be assessing with a simple check if I just did my exercise and there really isn't any, you know, out of the normal thing that I need to record. When I get to one that I have it done, but it's, I don't just want to do a simple check. I want to record something. I start my number system. So here is my first note, which is going to match up with this number over here. And then I am going to write the detail that I want to record about that. So maybe in this case it is, um, as simple as I found this exercise to be like extremely difficult. So I'm going to record that. But maybe you want to do a note about, you know, I moved up to 40 pounds um, for that kettlebell or, you know, so, so it really just, um, for most of them, I think you're going to find that you're just doing a simple check. And other times you're really going to feel like you want a note to record, whether it's about changing up the weight you're using or, um, you know, maybe an exercise gives you a lot of pain afterward or during. And so this notes part, depending on how much you're going to be doing here, really is what's going to dictate how many of these weeks you're going to end up being able to fit on your, how many weeks you're going to be able to fit on your one page. So that's why I say just start with assuming you're going to need your whole page for your week, and then you can always refine as you go. Down here for AM pain and PM pain, I use a lettering system if I want to write a note about that. So, so say I wake up with uh, a migraine on Monday morning. So I'm gonna put an A and then my note about it. You know, you'll kind of decide how simple or complex your system gets here. If you have chronic pain, you are probably really going to like the next part of this, which has to do with tracking your pain on a graph. I find that to be really helpful for people who are just kind of in pain all the time. But if you're pain is kind of more like an outlier thing and different from just kind of like some regular discomfort in your recovery, you might find this part really helpful. So you're going to get to the end of your week and it's maybe going to look something like this.
So you get to your end of the week and it's gonna be something like this and you're gonna do this every week. And at the same time, at the same time, you are going to be tracking your monthly graph. So I actually would recommend leaving pages for as many weeks as you're going to need before you start your graph. And then you are going to decide what you want to track on your graph. I think it is good to start with a pain scale, if that's kind of one of your issues, and um, a sleep, hours of sleep, because pain can really affect our sleep, of course. So, um, I write the days of the week across the top. And then I go zero to 10 because that's a good range for pain scale, but also for, you know, hours of sleep because there's no way I'm ever getting like over that many. <laughs> but you'll customize this to your own needs, obviously. Okay, so after you've determined what it is you want to track on your graph here, and for me, again, it was pain and hours of sleep, you are going to start to notice if there are trends. So for example, I might notice that the nights after I've not gotten, or the days after I've not gotten much sleep the night before, my pain scale is higher and vice versa. Or I might say like, oh man, my pain scale was really high on the 11th, 12th, and 13th. And then you might go back at, at those dates on your week's um, exercise charts and see, you know, on the chart or on your notes that maybe something was really going on with those exercises or maybe there were some stretches that you weren't doing for a few days 
And noticing those trends is really going to help you refine your plan as you go and give feedback to your physical therapists, your chiropractors, your massage therapists, um, your personal trainers, whoever it is you are working with. And then finally, another little journaling section that I like to do that I think is really beneficial. And it is, um, I recommend doing it every week, but you could also just do it at the end of every month if you wanted, depending on if you want to do it every week or at the end of every month or both, you're going to use those pages to ask yourself three things. So this is called keep, stop, and start analysis and so what that means is um, after you've looked over your week or your month you say okay what is it that seems to be helping me keeping me um, you know, in less pain what have you and I'm gonna keep doing that so maybe you realize that taking ibuprofen <laughs> every morning helps my pain level. And so you wanna keep doing that. So that's kind of a note to yourself that you're going to keep that in your plan for next week or next month. Um, stop, so you might wanna be like, okay, so clearly these nights of sleep where I'm only sleeping for five hours are really having an impact on my pain. So I want to stop um, watching TV in bed because that's what's going on when I'm not getting much sleep those nights. And so you're just being really honest with yourself about what of your habits are helpful and what are unhelpful. And I have done videos on how to create a helpful habit, how to stop an unhelpful habit. I will try to link those here so you can go look at those if you want more like guided journaling on around habits specifically and then finally you're going to think about what is it that you want to start next week or next month that you're currently not doing and so maybe that's you want to add in another personal training session every week. So the keep, stop, start is just a really a good way to make sure you're looking over all of this detail that you're getting yourself every um, week and month of your training or physical therapy progress. I hope that that helps. Let me know if you have any more questions. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.